Okay, um, so now we're going to talk about indirect price discrimination. And so if you remember before, um, we could identify our groups. We thought we could identify them directly. So for example, um, you know there might be a difference on willingness to pay based on people's age. Um, so that's why they gave sometimes senior discounts or or people, they could make it at an inconvenient time, um, like during the middle of the day or, or maybe an early dinner, and then they give a discount on that, as well as maybe student discounts, for example, we could identify them. Well, we can't always identify the groups um, that, that end by in this way, right? And also, it may be difficult, often it's difficult to prevent reselling. So in this case, we can do something called indirect price discrimination. So indirect price discrimination is when you make, um, so this one is we make uh, small differences in the product. Uh, and this is often done with physical products, but it can also be done with services too, um, in a product so, so that uh, people sort themselves in the high, high willingness to pay and low willingness to pay groups into high and low uh, willingness to pay. So they choose for themselves, um, and that's, uh, that then sorts them into these two groups. And they have to be very careful. So the, the, these kind of differences, uh, the key is then the, the price difference is bigger than the cost difference. Okay, so that's what they, so the, the markup is bigger on the high value end. Price difference is bigger than the cost difference. Okay, that's the key idea. So there's more markup on the high, there's more markup for the high group. Okay, so they're going to pay a bigger markup over cost. Now, over the marginal cost of the production for this thing. And we don't have a need to prevent resale because everyone had a choice to buy the thing in the first place. So they can go, they can go, if they like the thing that was cheaper, they can go buy it. Okay. So what are some examples of this? So, um, so this is another thing. Resale is not a problem because all the goods are freely available to everybody. In this case, they're not restricted um, by time or by age or by status or anything like that. So they're freely available to everybody. Okay, so um, what are some examples? Uh, with airline tickets, we have different classes of tickets, and these are used to sort people into lower and higher value groups. So we have different classes of tickets. Um, a most basic class uh, would be between business and economy. So yes, the business class comes with a little more services and a little more leg room, um, but the, the difference in legroom and services does not, the cost of providing those does not explain the cost difference. Okay? I mean, it does not explain the price difference. So that would explain some of the price difference, um, but in many cases, the business class tickets are several times uh, the cost of an economy ticket, but they're, what they're getting doesn't cost several times more to produce. Okay, so in this case, uh, they're just recognizing that the people are willing to be, pay more if they differentiate these seats in such a way that they make it nice enough then they'll be willing to, to buy the other one, and the people who care more about cost will then sit in economy, right? So they're able to divide uh, the airline customers into, into two groups, or exact, some in many cases into many groups, uh, because they have things like Economy Plus, and, I, I, and, and they also, in some airlines, have different grades of business class. So anyways, we get the idea. Um, so again, they're, they're able, this is indirect price discrimination. They're dividing these customers into different groups, um, and they're able to charge higher price to the high group and a lower price to the low group by separating the two into two different sections. Um, another example would be cars. Okay, so often the same company has different lines, right? So the the same company uh, has a luxury brand and a regular brand. Well, to lack of a better way to say it, an irregular brand. So, uh, for example, Honda, um, Honda and Acura, and Toyota and Lexus, just to give a couple of examples. Okay. So then, the often they produce cars. Oh, Volkswagen and Audi, I believe. I believe that's true. Um, they they um, often produce very similar cars. So if you just grab somebody who didn't know anything about them and took the emblems off. 
they're actually fairly similar and they'll make some differences between them but then the luxury brand will be marked up uh, the markup on the luxury brand will be much more so it'll be priced much higher uh, the difference in price is only partially because of more costs and a lot of it has to do with um, just people who are willing to pay more for a car are are, are, are pushed towards this or drawn towards this luxury car um, so that's another example um, just not to give too many examples but one one last example you could give here is uh, for phones okay so for phones we get uh, more storage so that's more storage is used as a way to attract people to uh, to buy a more expensive phone so sometimes there'll be like one phone has 32 gigabytes and another one has 64 and the one that's 64 will cost a hundred dollars more okay but um it doesn't cost them one hundred dollars to add 32 gigs to your phone this is just price discrimination okay so um phones is uh is a bigger there's a bigger markup on the phones with more storage or and some other kind of special features so this is a, just a way to separate the buyers into different groups um, so they might give a basic one that has like 16 gigs I don't even know if they do that anymore 16 gigs seems too little but anyways um, some really small amount of storage um, to customers who are willing to pay less and then they charge a lot more um, to customers who want more storage or more some other kind of feature so this is this is the basic idea of indirect price discrimination and again these are these are used by firms that have some power to set their prices so not perfect competition and they're used to make more profit um, but at the same time they also in many cases end up benefiting consumers as well um, because of the fact that they uh, they actually allow the consumers who have a lower willingness to pay to access a product which is affordable to them